Number one, Ibble Dibble here. Hello friends! Before we really begin, I'd like to dedicate this video to all the clueless men who find my channel looking for pics of Megan to jerk to and make the mistake of attempting to defend her slash insult me because they're so ashamed of masturbating to a 40-year-old bitch. And I don't use the word bitch due to some sort of internalized misogynistic views. Not at all. I mean it in the classic sense. To describe Megan as a ruthlessly selfish, haughty, abusive, entitled, unapologetic nag on the make, equally applicable to men and women. In fact, that's just the right word for these guys, bitch is, who don't know when to shut up and sit down. Hexiad, no one cares if you only want to f women 20 years younger than you. Other women certainly don't care, unless they personally, for some reason, want to f you and the feeling isn't mutual. I personally definitely don't care. Same as I don't care about Harry or Cleo's husband whose name I've already forgotten. You should be way more ashamed of thinking all women view every other woman on earth as competition than of wanting to bed younger women yourself. But most of all, you should be ashamed <laughs> of wanting either Megan or Cleo so much you searched for videos about her, clicked on my video titled single woke female thinking it would be something sexy and then lashed out when it wasn't. I noticed the only videos on your channel are about vintage gaming and Amber Heard. Baby, incels like you don't have to worry about burning gold diggers, I promise. They don't want you. You're too much work, always hanging around the house, vaping, asking them to reenact hentai sh Ugh. Red Zwan. <laughs> I don't believe my two-day-old video that only has 11,000 views total, less than half my average, about Meghan Markle style on a channel dedicated solely and wholly to mocking Meghan Markle, was suggested to you. A dude in Malaysia whose public subscriptions and videos focus almost solely on urban planning. Videos with chat GPT generated scripts and text to voice re hashing of daily mail headlines get five times the views I get. You have to be looking pretty hard for three out of three ranking Megan's all-time Invictus looks best to worst to be the first video from my channel you come across. I suspect you were deliberately, specifically, keyword searching pretty pictures of one of your favorite ladies and were simply disappointed to find out she's not a good person. Last and no judgment, but probably least. We have Michael. How many looser do you think I am, Michael? Also, is this I thought skag was some sort of disgusting street drug. Michael, have you taken so much skag you forgot the word skank? Love the hair though, rock on. If you ever meet your muse, you will definitely enjoy shopping for weaves together. Guys, I don't care if you need the women you map to to be good people. And I don't care why you need that. I even have a little sympathy for you probably having a kind of weird childhood. But if you attempt to insult me or compare me to the trash bags like Megan, I mock in any way, you will definitely get blocked and potentially featured on a future video as well. If you don't want to hear what I have to say, but need those pics so badly, you can't hit that back button, try the mute button. Now, onto the original Meghan Markle white knight, or should I say biracial knight, colorblind knight? <laughs> the original Captain Save-A-Ho aboard the SS USA Network. Actor Patrick J. Adams. So who is Patrick J. Adams? Well, he is the mildly embarrassing son of a pretty respectable Canadian journalist and documentary filmmaker named Claude Adams. As an investigative journalist, Claude Adams reported from Colombia, Haiti, Bosnia, Egypt, Hong Kong, South Africa, and Iraq in the 80s and early 90s. He's most famous for being one of the first journalists present during the 1989 fall of the Berlin Wall, and one of the first to report on the early 80s Ethiopian famine. He's also known for undercover interviewing survivors of Mao's Cultural Revolution in May 
mainland China. He is the author of an authoritative 1981 book on the Iran hostage crisis that later got made into Argo, the Ben Affleck vehicle, and the producer of the 1998 documentary Rwanda Out of the Darkness, which depicted pressures on the country's justice system four years after the genocide. He also taught broadcast journalism for a couple years to postgrads at the University of British Columbia, and his little spoiled baby brat who he put through USC is Patrick. Patrick is a working actor, I'll give him that. Always supporting, never leading, always in ensemble cast TV series, never movies, never anything good, never anything meaningful, only very occasionally nominated, and the only award he's ever won is Best Actor at the Bucharest Shortcut Cinefest in 2021. Suits was his first real job, with the exception of NCIS, of which his father-in-law is the co-creator slash executive producer. And just in case you think I'm being hard on the guy, Patrick himself (laughs) admitted he had no idea what work was before Suits in an interview with Collider magazine. Quote, I didn't know how much work it was. I didn't know what that looked like over a long period of time. Not that I would have done anything differently, but it certainly was a rude awakening to understand that level of commitment and hours and the amount of time and energy and love that you have to pour into something like that, end quote. And then in a later interview alongside Megan with Larry King, he again told us he didn't work before Suits. I mean, I couldn't pay my rent before I got this job, so that security is nice. No, he couldn't pay his rent, but his dad could, or his heiress girlfriend, who was then starring on Pretty Little Liars and living with him, certainly did. Apparently, before Suits, he went a whole year without working at all. Just sort of a depressed, auditioning, kept man. He actually didn't work regularly until after Suits wrapped. So you could say that Patrick is possibly the only person Meghan Markle has ever given a come up to. His Instagram bio literally reads, the guy from that show you're watching on that app because that girl married that prince. (laughs) I say kept man because the aforementioned father-in-law, Donald Belisario, was one of the most prolific TV producers of the 80s with hits including Jag, Quantum Leap, Magnum P.I., and Battlestar Galactica, as well as the NCIS franchise that made him worth between a quarter and half a billion dollars. Patrick is a Nepo baby who married an heiress, and the line beneath the guy from that show you're watching on that app because that girl married that prince is a link to an architectural digest profile of his home with said heiress, which we all know only the swankiest of the swanky can swing. And though his Instagram is a digital shrine to the wife that made him a father and owner of an iconic 1924 Wallace Neff Spanish colonial in Los Feliz, currently worth six or seven million dollars. His Twitter is an entirely unremarkable cacophony of self-promotion, promoting friends, awareness sans action, dad jokes, and of course, defending Meghan Markle. Now, why would a guy who seems like he's got it made do such a thing? He is still playing Wordle, so... I guess he and Megan are on the same intellectual level. Or is there another reason Patrick J. Adams so adamantly and verbosely speaks for his former co-star? This tweet I remembered from around when the Harry and Megan Netflix series came out and I thought, hmm, someday I'm going to make a video on this idiot because this is one type of sugar comment I get all the time. Get a life. Why are you so obsessed with her? Et cetera, et cetera. I'll read it for those of you who are listening, not watching. Quote, hello to the people and many bots debating all things Markle and including me in the conversation. I just want you to know a couple of things. One, I don't read any of it. Two, life is short. Three, there has got to be better things for you to be doing. Even you bots, hashtag bot better. Patrick, I despise baseless condescension. Many people seem to make the same pair of incorrect assumptions as you. First, that people who do not always put their time to its highest and best use 
have wasted their lives. And second, that they are better judges of higher and better uses than whomever they address, Patrick. I don't think the time you spend fiddling with the arrangement of tchotchkes in your house or taking bad pictures with vintage cameras or tweeting about politics you know nothing about is of any higher or better use than my time spent on this YouTube channel. Just hobbies. <laughs> At least my Meghan Markle roasting serves to highlight the ills of modern American society and influence through the convenient lens of one illiterate while your dawdling and unproductive creative bliss is nothing for anyone but you. Your pretending to be political is offensive in its superficiality, and your lumping presenters like myself in with literal thoughts would be like me lumping actors like yourself, or frankly, actors far better than you, in with CGI extras. As far as highest and best uses for our time on Earth goes, I haven't even gotten into vocational choice and impact, Act, because unlike you, I believe immorality lies in judging people's lives by some sort of Keynesian rubric, not in accepting, nay, expecting the emotional, irrational, inevitable inefficiency that is human nature. But anyway, let's begin the begin. In the beginning, PJ seemed to be really playing up his closeness to Megan with cloying tweets like this. When her engagement was announced, she said she was just going out to get some milk. Haha, -ha. this is probably the only acceptable one, actually. Then he and his wife were invited to the royal wedding. And the night before, he tweets, Going to bed now and thinking a lot about the strange, surreal, and wonderful day my friend Megan is going to have tomorrow. Megan, wherever you are, we are so grateful to be here to watch you both take this monumental step together. Love deeply and live well. Hashtag royal wedding emoji wedding rings. <laughs> And then when Archie was born, just heard that the world just got heavier by seven pounds and three ounces. Much love to him and his incredible parents. Learned firsthand seven months ago how transformational becoming a parent is and couldn't be happier for Megan and Harry as they begin this adventure. Hashtag play date soon. I just like to remind everyone that you can always congratulate your friends over DM. You don't actually need to post this stuff publicly for the entire world to read. Patrick chose to. Choices. When shit hit the fan with Megxit and then again with Oprah... <laughs> Patrick took sides fast and loudly with Megan. Quote, Megan Markle and I spent the better part of a decade working together on suits. From day one, she was an enthusiastic, kind, cooperative, giving, joyful, and supportive member of our television family. She remained that person and colleague as fame, prestige, and power accrued. Not to be rude, Patrick, but how would you know? Narcissists really only have two ways of dealing with other people, love bombing and abuse. Both are forms of emotional terrorism they use to get what they want. She was seventh on the call sheet in your show. You were more important to the show than she was. She did almost all her scenes with you. Of course, she treated you well, and she may have even treated other people well in front of you to build credibility in your eyes. That does not mean that she is a person who always treats everyone well. Do you even know the meaning of prestige or power? I wouldn't say either applies to Megan. A person of prestige is one who arouses respect or admiration. I don't think Megan has that. I know, I'm not sure she ever had that. As for power, it's the ability to affect a desired outcome by directing or influencing the behavior of others. I think Megan has power over Harry, if that's what you mean. Power over her mom looks like a little bit of power over you. But as far as powerful world figures go, no, I couldn't say that. Your use of these particular words actually indicates to me that these are your feelings about royalty. And you were eager to imbue the agreeable, empty vessel of a woman you used to know with those qualities as a way of admiring yourself for once having, or perhaps even at this point, imagining you still have some power over her. And again, that word powerful, quote, she has always been a powerful woman with a deep sense of morality and a fierce work ethic and has never been afraid to speak up, be heard and defend herself and those she holds dear. Like the rest of the world, I have watched her navigate the last few years in astonishment, end quote. Um, Angela Merkel 
is a powerful woman. Christine Lagarde, powerful woman. Queen Elizabeth was a powerful woman. When people use the phrase powerful to describe women who aren't powerful, it doesn't empower women who hope to be powerful, which I think is their intention. Rather, it distracts from the reality that there are very powerful women and diminishes in the public perception the manners and amounts in which women can truly hold and wield power. Power. I think there are lots of men like Patrick who've honestly just never carefully considered the matter of feminism and imagine they're doing womankind a favor by pretending that all women are intrinsically powerful <laughs> in some sort of mystical, magical, divine, feminine energy, wombs and witches sense. And that's so fun misogynistic, patronizing, and offensive. Pray tell Patrick, when on the set of your USA Network drama did Megan have to speak up, be heard, and defend herself and those she holds dear? Please tell us, please. Very eager to hear about Megan's activist history only you seem to be privy to. And again, deep sense of morality. How would you know? What moral test did you witness her endure? Fierce work ethic. Two things here. Number one, you all had the same hours, didn't you? Were you all the fiercest working actors in the biz? And second, just the application of the word fierce to work ethic. Again, your cheesy monetarist conception of the world. Ew. As long as someone fulfills their obligations in a work setting, the attitude with which they fulfill them should not matter much given it doesn't negatively impact anyone else. Pretending to care more than everyone else is not an admirable trait. In fact, I would argue that person at work does negatively impact everyone else. Okay, now we're just getting into straight up projection. Quote, she fell in love, moved to a new country, became a household name across the entire globe, and began the difficult work of trying to find her place in a family dynamic that can at best be described as complicated and at worst seemingly archaic and toxic. End quote. Patrick, if you were trying to cover your ass with the seemingly... <laughs> You failed. I am really genuinely curious about the impetus for this tweet. Did PJ genuinely swallow Megan's bait, hook, line, and sinker, and agree to echo and amplify her message, possibly even using her exact words, out of some sense of loyalty? Or was it in order that he not be tainted by his previously touted very close association with her? Or was he paid to do so? Do you think Sunshine Sachs contacted him and somehow remunerated him for this? Or do you think Princess Patrick is just living in his Little Mermaid fantasy and felt like emoting? I think, I believe that this is the real Princess Pushy Patrick, Duchess of Dumb Delusions. Because next we get, quote, It sickened me to read the endless, racist, slanderous, clickbaiting vitriol spewed in her direction from all manner of media across the UK and the world. But I also knew that Megan was stronger than people realized or understood. And they would regret underestimating her. And then they welcomed Archie. And on any sort of decent planet, that would be a time to stop sharpening the knives and let these two people enjoy the magical early months and years of starting a family. But we don't live on that planet. And instead, the hunt continued. It's obscene, all caps, obscene, that the royal family, whose newest member is currently growing inside of her, all caps, growing inside of her, is promoting and amplifying accusations of, quote, bullying that's in quotes, against a woman who herself was basically forced to flee the UK in order to protect her family and her own mental health. In my opinion, this newest chapter and its timing is just another stunning example of the shamelessness of an institution that has outlived its relevance, is way overdrawn on credibility, and apparently bankrupt of decency. Find someone else to admonish, berate, and torment. My friend Megan is way out of your league. <laughs> Was he drunk? Patrick, you don't know sh about those people. You went to a party at their house once. You've never lived in that country. And by your own account, you don't even read the discussions surrounding Megan. So 
how would you know? You're literally calling for the abolition of the British monarchy based on Megan's fake crying hagiography on Netflix? Dibble dabblers, let me know in the comments below. Do you think Patrick came up with this all by himself? Or do you think Megan wrote a script, called everyone she thought she might be able to convince to do this, spent three days memorizing and rehearsing, and then personally called each of them from the floor she was sobbing on, making extremely spurious claims and convenient sound bites she hoped they would repeat? Let me know in the comments below. This is also the point, in my humble opinion, where things get weird, right? If you were his wife at this point, wouldn't you be asking yourself why he was white knighting so hard for this woman? This is a lot, a lot. Do you think he and Troyan thought that if they really came out hard for her, they would get a piece of this Netflix deal? They're actors. Troyan fancies herself a writer. Patrick fancies himself a director and producer. Megan had always played dumb and amenable with them. Do you think they thought she was a mark? When Piers Morgan pointed out how nuts Patrick's allegations and assertions were by saying, quote, Meghan Markle's showbiz mates who flew over and groveled up to the royals at her wedding, now publicly trashing the monarchy and suggesting it be abolished. Disgusting, end quote. Patrick responded with the absolute dunk. Cry not for Piers Morgan. There are plenty of bridges for him to find work under. Sincerely, the jumped up twerp, end quote. Patrick. Piers Morgan is and always has been far more successful than you. The same way it's quite rich, pun intended, for a sometimes working actor financed by his super wealthy father-in-law to dictate how other people should value their time. The projection is strong, invoking the existential threats of homelessness and unemployment. Having betrayed an enthusiastic, kind, cooperative, giving, joyful, supportive member of the family, a powerful woman with a deep sense of morality and a fierce work ethic who's not afraid to speak up and defend herself and those she holds dear. Oh, we're definitely still talking about Megan, not your wife, and the high wire you're publicly walking at the moment. Then there was silence for many months. And pretty recently, just a week ago or so, Patrick posted an Instagram reel of previously unseen pictures and video of Megan. Would it be unfair of me to describe these shots as intimate, yearning even, if not indicative of an actual romance? These are, why do you have these pictures of her on your phone pictures? They are not at all normal pictures to have of your coworker. Larry King made it clear he thought Pat and Meg were indulging in a sexual relationship they wouldn't own up to. I actually analyzed this Larry King footage as part of one of my chapter reviews of Tom Bauer's Revenge, so I will link to that video if you click in the upper right hand corner of this video. You should be able to see it and go watch it if you like, but I will include the whole segment now. Are you single? I am not. Uh, I am. I am. I am not, not married, but not single. Uh, I am. I am. I am. Uh, I am. I am. I am. So, what do you think? <laughs> do you think Larry is being unkind, or do you think that <laughs> these two look like he interrupted them in the middle of a coked up sexcapade? You, you <laughs> start me again. <laughs> I'm not married, but I'm, I'm not single. But I'm, I'm not single. But I'm, I'm not single. While Megan had initiated her divorce at this point, Patrick J. Adams was just about to propose to his girlfriend. So the two of you are not involved off the show? No. No, no, no. no. That, would, that would never work. So why is there so much chemistry here? I think because we got we knew each other early something. on. Something. You're picking up on something. Well, I think TV sees us a certain way, right? Before, I wasn't totally convinced, but these new photos from Patrick kind of make me think so. The next question is, do you think Patrick is also some sort of narcissist, triangulating his wife with this gallery of Megan, picking away at some old wound? 
Or do you think, also like Megan, he's a publicity whore, equally as selfish and superficial, willing to throw anyone under the bus to get a little tabloid buzz around his latest project, and that's what this is about? Or do you think there's something personal and resentful here. Do you think he really thought they were friends? He went to the wedding, he bought a lovely gift, he defended her on Twitter, and then no invitations to the Montecito manse ever arrived. None of his wife's invites to theirs were accepted. No calls to get involved in any Netflix collabs ever came through to his agent. So now he'll be trickling out every unflattering photo and bit of personal dirt he's got on her little by little, feigning undying love and issuing fake irrelevant apologies like this. The last couple of days I foolishly and thoughtlessly let a trip down Suits memory lane distract me from the very real and ongoing fight everyone in at SAG AFTRA continues to wage in its effort to win our membership realistic 21st century compensation and protections. It was an embarrassing oversight, for which I'm incredibly sorry. So grateful to those who gently and swiftly course corrected me here, and I look forward to continuing the fight in the days and weeks ahead. It was insensitive for you to release some old photos during the SAG after a strike? Really? That's why this was insensitive? What do you believe Patrick J. Adams is up to now? Let me know in the comments below. Toodles. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. <laughs>